Sango. Hey, how's it going? Hello, everyone. Uh, well, you know who I am, so I shouldn't have to introduce myself every time I do these videos. But you know, every once in a while I get new people. So I'm Cassidy, which you would know because you're on Cassidy's blog. So, uh, <laughs> oh, what's happening today? Well, it's a nice sunny day, as you can tell by the, the sunlight streaming through on the back wall there. It's a nice sunny day right now. Um, kind of chilly. It's 28 degrees Fahrenheit. And that, uh, let me double check my weather here. And that actually works out to minus two Celsius. Yes. For those of you who don't use the Fahrenheit rules and are doing what the rest of the world actually does. <laughs> using Celsius. I've gotten used to it when my friends start saying, oh damn, it was so hot out today. It was 32 degrees. And I'm like, mm, yeah, they're they're in Australia. <laughs> I know what they mean. It's hot. Uh, or when they say, oh, it was only like one degree outside today. And it's like, they're in Canada. I know what they're talking about. Yeah, I don't get confused. A little bit of trivia. You'll never get confused at minus 40 degrees because minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit is exactly the same as minus 40 degrees Celsius. There you go. So if someone says the wind chill is minus 40, you don't have to ask if it's Fahrenheit or Celsius. It is. It's both. There you go. Your trivia for the day. So. Ah, now it's nice and sunny right now. We're supposed to get snow after 4 p.m. You know, from like 4 p.m. to like 11 p.m. It's supposed to snow. And they're talking like 3 to 5 inches, which I'm not going to be out. <laughs> you know, it's crazy. I'm not going to be out driving in this crap. So, uh, tomorrow night though. Well, I'll get to that in a bit, but... Uh, so far, what's my week been like? Well, you know, I actually put out an excerpt. <laughs> I put out two excerpts, actually. Um, the first scene of Annie starting to astral project. And I know someone pointed out, there's a naked kid again. <laughs> Annie's naked. Uh, I've written why she's naked. I, I need to post that. I'm hoping to get the, the next excerpt out yesterday. Yesterday, wow, I must have my TARDIS hidden away someplace. <laughs> I'll get that out as soon as I'm done with this video and it'll show up on the blog. Oh, look, Cassie put this out yesterday. <laughs> How'd that happen? Uh, sorry, I just knocked over Cosima. Cosima says hi. She has nice hairs. Helena even says so. But, um,. Yeah, I hope to get that out tomorrow. I need... I'm writing slowly. It's like I told you. The words are not coming as quickly as they used to. And there's still a little bit of depression here. But it's not quite as bad. Um, certain things have been happening. Uh, not so much on the job front. Um, I haven't heard anything on the job front. Here it is, the middle of February, and I haven't heard anything. Which is not unusual. The last two times I was out of work, I was out of work for like three months each time. Um, I'm just hoping when I do get a job, it's not going to be, eh, we have a six month contract. It's like, no, I don't want a six month contract. I'd like to work until I'm 66. So I've got some job security, you know. I'm tired of being on a 1099 because it is a pain in the ass to deal with. So, uh, but... Yesterday, I went and saw Black Panther. I went to see the 3D viewing of it at 10.40 in the morning. So there weren't a lot of people in the theater, which is, that's kind of the way I like to watch a movie. I don't like a lot of distractions. When I was leaving the theater, there were a whole bunch of people starting to come in for the showings afternoon. Um, whatever you may or may not have heard about Black Panther, and I mean, that's all anybody's been talking about for the last couple of weeks, um, you need to see this movie. That's all I'm going to say. You need to see this movie. It is by far not just one of the best films put out by Marvel ever. It's one of the best films ever. Uh, there's a great there's a great story there. 
uh, with a few twists and turns, there is, for the writers and us, incredible world building. Uh, what they do to build Wakanda from the ground up. It's just fantastic. Uh, the acting is incredible. Uh, I mean, I said this a long time ago. When you look at the cast, if they had been all white actors, people would, people would have been losing their shit the moment the cast was announced. And by people, I mean white critics, let's just face it. Um, there is some heavy-duty acting going on in this film, and it's got its super serious parts, it's got its funny parts. There's a couple of lines in there that are hilarious. Um, you know, you have to watch it, you really do. And the action sequences, probably the most intelligent action I've seen ever. Uh, you would know what you're talking what I'm talking about. It's when you see it actually happen It's a case of someone knowing how to use the equipment they've got To you and using it to their advantage. It's not just I'm gonna blast shit I've seen one or two critics actually say the movie is a bit like a Shakespearean tragedy and it is it really is in a way it is like a bit of a Shakespearean tragedy. It really is. So if you get a chance, see it. You will not be disappointed. And I would say see it in 3D because it is, it just, everything pops and it is a very vibrant, colorful movie. Um, you'll know what I'm talking about if you see stills and pictures from it. Um, the person who did the costume design for this movie, if they do not get an Academy Award for Best Costume, well, we'll probably know why. <laughs> Let's just say the, the reasoning behind it is pretty black and white, should we say? No, the costuming in this movie is incredible. It's fantastic. Uh, it's such a vibrant, beautiful movie. Like I said, go see it. I highly recommend it. And I I don't highly recommend a lot of movies. Uh, there's only been a, f a few movies that I've highly recommended in the last few years. One of which was uh, Mad Max Fury Road, which I was crying at the end of it. Because it's uh, to me it was such a beautiful film. And then I love both the Guardian of the Galaxy movies. Because again, there's a story there. You know. And then this one. Um... A lot of understated acting and you have to pick up on some of the lines some of the lines make so much sense in the context in which they're used but you just have to listen and laugh along with what's being said um, so there <laughs> go see it that's all I'm gonna say go see it uh, spend your money in and enjoy the time and see it in 3d I love, I actually love seeing movies in 3Ds. I wear the 3D glasses over my glasses, and I don't have a problem seeing the movie that way. So when people say, well, I can't wear 3D glasses because I wear glasses, well, so do I. <laughs> and I have never had a problem putting 3D glasses over the front of my glasses and watching a movie. Never. I have never once had an issue with that. So, you know, there you go. <laughs> I'm just, if you say, I can't wear them, I'm going to call bullshit on you. There you go. Now, um, tomorrow night, I'm actually going to go to Baltimore. Uh, why am I going to Baltimore? Why are you going to Baltimore, Cassie? Why, well, that's a good question. Uh, I'm actually going, it's derby related, and I'm driving down to a roller rink in the southeast area of Boston. Bo Did I just say Boston? I meant Baltimore. Uh, southeast area of Baltimore. I'll be near the harbor. And um, Lacey Knight, who played in the U.S. Derby World Cup. Oh, well, I should say she played in the Derby World Cup for the U.S., uh, who were the gold medalists. Uh, she is giving a clinic on jamming and pivoting. 
being a pivot, being a jammer. And I'm hoping one of these days to actually be a pivot because pivots get to do strategy and they get to do offense, offense and stuff like that. That's really kind of some of the stuff I want to do. So I'm going down there to learn from her. I am not going to skate on the floor because I'm not certified and this is for certified skaters only. But you can go down and spectate. So I'm going to be taking my pen and my paper and um, I'm going to be making notes for what happens. And I think right now I'm the only person going from my team, even though I'm like, hey, you know, do you guys, anybody want to go to this? Anybody want to go to this? And it's like, uh, crickets. So I'm going. I'm going to learn. I, so far, it's funny because I've I've made it through 90 minutes of a um, practice drill with um, a world champion. And then I went to a blocker clinic that was held by an, another person who is, I guess, a former world champion. And now <laughs> I'm going to a jammer pivot clinic by a world champion. And I hope to get a picture of her with her. And I hope to hell she's got a gold medal with her because I'd like to get a picture of us next to her gold medal. Uh, when Loray Evans came to uh, Hart, she brought her gold medal with her and everybody was hold, passing it around and we're all like, <gasps> you know, it's like the closest any of us will ever get to a gold medal. So in anything derby related. So, you know, yeah, we were like, oh, this is so good. This is so fabulous. But um, this clinic is even becoming more important because <laughs> something important happened. Now, let me back this up to give you a little context. Something important happened in the Derby area for me. So let me back this up in context. We, one of our team members actually rented out the rink this last Tuesday night. And it was just like, you can come out and do whatever the hell you wanted to do. Anything you wanted to work on. And a lot of people were doing their 27 fives and we actually had a coach there and we had um, an NSO who was timing people. So it was literally official, you know. If you did it, you did it. You know, they were marking down the time. I tried three times and all three times I said the hell with it after just a few laps. I was all worked up. My anxiety was like through the roof about doing this because as I've been saying I, I only got a couple of weeks to certify if I want to play and I just I jacked myself out of it and it's funny because I had my GoPro with me and I was filming each one of my attempts and on my second attempt you know I was like oh, I screwed up you know I just wasn't doing it right that was how it felt to me so I pulled out the video footage the other day. I was just like, eh, I downloaded the video footage. I think it was Thursday. No, it was actually uh, Wednesday morning. Uh, so I, I'm looking at it. My second attempt, my first lap, and this is from a standing start, was 12.3 seconds, which is good. That's actually what you're supposed to do. You should have your first lap under 12 and a half seconds. And then my second and third lap were both 11.2 seconds, which is just a tenth of a second off the pace you really need to maintain for a 27.5. And I think my fourth lap, I had a bobble and it was like 11.8 or something like that. But the point of it is, if I had kept up with it, I might not have gotten my 27.5, but I would have been damn close if I'd kept up with it. And I've been feeling that way when I skate in packs. Like I have, when we go out and we do a 40 and 10, I have all this energy. And in fact, Wednesday night was the first night all the people who could skate a 40 and 10, and that's like everybody, actually did skate a 40 and 10. Even like some of the new people, they hung in there and skated 40 laps in 10 minutes. So it's the first time I can think of where all of us have actually done this. Um, I've been part of a group where all of us did a 40 and 8, which is butt kicking. Uh, you're actually skating a 25.5 at that point. So 
Wednesday night, things got a little strange. Um, while we were doing something, I don't remember, oh, we were doing a pace line. And one of the refs was was taping down something. And I'm like, hmm, this is, this is going to be interesting. And then I saw what he was taping, and I told the person next to me, I said, he's taping down a penalty box. And I was right. He was taping down a penalty box. And we had four refs there. And what we basically did was Roxy set up what she called her three goons. And you had to skate around the track and try to get past the three goons who were in a tripod. Uh, they could have helped us get by, but for the most part, they were blocking the hell out of people. <laughs> and if you committed a penalty, you got sent to the penalty box. And you had to squat for 30 seconds until you were released. And then you came back onto the track. And then she kept stepping it up. It was like, okay, well, if you get knocked out, you got to come to the penalty box. So if you get a penalty or you get knocked out, it was a penalty box. I got, that time, I got knocked out like three times, just boom, 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 right in a row. <laughs> I, there was one, I came out of the penalty box, and the tripod's like right there where I'm coming out of the penalty box, so I have to come out behind them. And the moment I tried getting around them, they knocked me out, so I just turned around and went back. Now, about a week and a half, two weeks ago, I was actually cleared to start hitting, which means it basically means that you're allowed to practice with the vets, and when the vets hit you, they don't necessarily have to pull their punches anymore. Um, I did some hitting drills back in August and September, and it was pretty well known that the vets were told, you know, go about 50% on these guys. You know, don't try to wreck them. Which led to my famous first hit from uh, Red Rum Doll. She was she was gonna hit me, and she's like, "Okay, you ready for it?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Yeah, go ahead, hit me." And she did. It just knocked me over. And she's looking at me. She goes, "You told me you were ready for it. You lied." <laughs> I said, "I guess I didn't know exactly how much how hard this was gonna be." So she had to step it down a little bit. But uh, we were cleared for hitting, which means now the vets can basically, if they want to come at us full on, they can. Uh, we, when we were in a hitting pace line Monday night, uh, one of the coaches said, only hit a few people. You know, it's like if you hadn't done this a lot of times, and I was one of them, hit them at like 50%. I was like, Argh. I was telling a few players, and uh, basically someone said they could hear me throughout the entire line where I'm going, just hit me, just hit me, come on, just hit me. <laughs> And a couple of the players came up and they just smacked the hell out of me. And the good thing is I stayed on my skates. The only time I went down was when I was trying to block somebody else and I tripped up or tripped them and went down. And then I got right back up and went back into the line, uh, which I'm able to do now pretty well. But the gist of it was during one of our, our blocking Blood and Thunder games, one of the vets, Red Rum Doll, she come at me. She came at me hard. And she was trying to force me off the track. And I got down and braced myself against her. And trust me, she was pushing as hard as she could to get me off the track. And I was pushing right back, trying to keep from going off the track. And she didn't push me off. So, so we were cleared for hitting and then we did this penalty drill the other night and when, then we just did this it was just insane because we went on for about 45 minutes with two like one minute breaks just to get water and kind of recuperate so it was pretty cardio intensive especially when you're running into a wall and you're having to push three people around you're trying to get around them and it's cardio intensive and I was hanging in there right up to the end, which after I got knocked down like three or four times, I was just like, <gasps> I was, I had to stop and catch my breath before I went into one, one wall again that I was having trouble getting around. But there was actually, um, there was one tripod, one three wall that I hit and that I 
spent about a hundred feet pushing them down the track, trying to get around them before I actually did. And you talk about exhausting, you know. And the funny thing is, I added up, I know who was in the wall, and I added up the ages of the three people I was going up against. Their combined ages was 70 years. So, all together, their combined ages are just 10 years more than me. And I was just like banging on them, you know, trying to get around them. Um, and I did that earlier. One of our players got caught up. She was, she was stuck in a three wall. And our coach was like, isn't anyone going to help her out? And I just flew in and um, nailed the tripod and started, you know, trying to bump people out of the way. And I had two people who braced against me and I just pushed them down the track <laughs> trying to get our uh, jammer around but at the end uh, because I was exhausted partially uh, I actually got tripped um, the player got called on a, a low block on me uh, basically she had her leg out and I tripped over the leg but when I went down I hit my head <laughs> oops this is one of the reasons why we wear helmets. I hit my head. And when I went to get up, it was like all of a sudden everything just kind of going Woo, like that. You know, partially from hitting my head, partially from just like being exhausted. So they whistled everything dead because I was basically down. And uh, one of the refs, who is a registered nurse, came over and she was doing follow my finger thing, you know, like this. And they said, you know, how do you feel? Do you feel nauseous? Do you feel dizzy? And I said, I feel a little dizzy. And they were like, well, Roxy, my coach, she's like, you go sit against the wall. You go sit against the wall for six minutes because that's like when you're injured like that, you have to sit out and you have to sit out for a certain amount of time. You're not allowed to go back in until that time is up. And the EMTs or whatever say, okay, she's able to go back in and play. So I'm sitting up against the wall watching everything finish, and then Roxy came over and said, you look a little flush anyway. She goes, I think you needed a break. Um, and she says, don't, don't worry about it. You know, there's Monday. Don't worry about it. And I was like, okay. But afterwards, after I stood up and after it was all over, she came over and we were talking to each other. And I thanked her. I was like, thank you for letting me do all this stuff. I go, this is what I've really been wanting to do for a long time. And, you know, I haven't been able to do this since like September, August and September. And, um, you know, it's all coming back and I'm in much better shape now. And, you know, she was saying, well, this isn't really scrimmaging. This is just fucking around. She goes, just wait till we get into scrimmaging. And then she tell, I, I told her, I says, well, I'm getting this all confused because I'm getting excited. She tells me, she goes, if you can bring up your time, and I know what she was talking about, my 27.5, if you can bring up that time by March 14th, you will play in the March 18th bout. She goes, I'm going to cut people leeway to get there because she says, I want to see you guys play. And I said, all I've got to do is my 27.5, and the problem is I'm fucking myself on it with all these head games. And she's just like, mm-hmm, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> you know, um, a lot of it is, you know, I just get it in my head, my anxiety gets up, and I'm like, I can't do this, my form sucks, all this other shit. I'm trying to concentrate on a million different things at the same time instead of just skating. So she said, you know, if you get... When she says get time up, I'm assuming she means I gotta I gotta do 27 laps in five minutes. But I, you know, I would hope she wouldn't do something like, well, you had a 503. I'm gonna let you go. We'll we'll you know knock five seconds off because you're an old bitch. I don't. I wouldn't want that. I really. Would. I think I can do this. I really do. Some of the laps I've timed myself doing, you know, I can get right up there. I can do this. It's just a matter of doing it. And I would become the oldest newly certified uh, player, I think, in Pennsylvania if I do this. But anyway, she not only did that, but then she cleared us for scrimmaging. 
because if we're going to play in March, we have to know how to play. Now, one of the things she told me was, if you don't play in March, you're not going, you know, you're not going to get upset. And I said, I will not lose it. I will understand. I said, I know this is all on me. I got to do this. And she says, there's always other bouts. I said, well, there's the April bout. She says, I don't know if I'm going to have anyone new playing the April bout. She goes, that's going to be a rough bout. But she said, there is May. So it's like, if I can do it by March 14th, I, I play March 18th. If I don't do it by March 14th, I'm pretty much assured to play in the May bout, which is, I believe, May 20th. But I am assured to play. I just have to certify. And now I'm cleared for scrimmaging, uh, which means you learn how to play by actually playing. We're going to uh, get in our little teams, and what she told us to do was go out and buy a black and white jersey. Uh, one black jersey, one white jersey. You buy black and white jerseys. Uh, I actually have someone who's going to put my jersey number on my jerseys so that when I'm out there, if I get called on a penalty, I can hear the ref go, and my jersey number, here it is, 882. So I'll hear them say, if I'm wearing a white jersey, they'll go, white, 882, cut, report to the box. That's exactly how you do it. And I told her, I says, I want to put my number on there so I can get used to hearing the refs saying that. So that if that happens for a month, by the time I get to the March bout, when I'm in the bout, all of a sudden you hear that black 882 or white 882 or red 882, you know, you have your penalty, you get off the track, you go to the penalty box. Where we don't have to squat during a bout, we actually have chairs. <laughs> yeah. So I've got my jerseys. Um, one of my teammates, she's actually going to put my numbers on my jerseys this weekend and bring them to uh, practice on Monday night. But Monday night, I think shit's going to start getting real. This is, this is it. This is like almost the last hurdle. The last, they're letting us scrimmage conditional on whether or not we certify. It's like, you're not certified yet, but I'm going to, you're, you only need a few things. So I'm going to clear you to play. You're going to clear the scrimmage. That way, if you certify between now and March 14th, you play. That's it. You know, you're in the bout. You're, she said we're tentatively right now on the roster. Because it's all rookies. So it'll be people who've never scrimmaged before or have never bowed it before. So we're tentatively, as she said, you're on the roster. What keeps you on the roster is certifying by March 14th. <laughs> yeah, this is, I mean, it does have me excited. It put me in a good mood. Um, because now I know, I do have this goal, you know. I do know that if I can get this thing done, um, you know, that's it. Cassidy wins, you know. I, I become a real player. You know, I get to register. I get, I get put into what we call the mothership. <laughs> uh, I'm just a passenger on the mothership. We have a few people who are actually, they can get into the, what we call the mothership, which is the website for uh, Woofted Up, the Women's Flat Track Derby Association. They call that the mothership. And, uh, you know, I'll pay for my insurance. The team will order me a jersey. And I am now, like I said, um, I don't know if I will play in April because it's going to be a sanctioned bout and it's going to be an ass-kicking bout. But then again, you never know. Maybe I'll do some real good stuff in March. And Roxy will go, okay. I'll give it a shot. I'll put you on the roster. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, but for sure, she said, you know, May. So, this much closer. So, what I'm, uh, what I'm actually hoping to do in the next few weeks is I'm going to take my GoPro with me. 
and I'm hoping to actually wear it while we're doing some of the scrimmaging so you can get an idea of some of the insanity that goes on when we're doing this crap. Uh, it's nuts. It really is. When you're banging up against the tripod and all this other crap, it gets crazy. There's one person who, um, her quote was, a derby bout is a little like playing speed chess while people are throwing bricks at you. <laughs> And there is some truth to that. It really is just insane because you're trying to do your thing. You're watching out for your jammer. You're trying to hear the refs. And this is all going on while there is a ton of noise going on around you. You really don't get how noisy it is inside a roller rink. When you've got 10 people out on a track, you've got coaches yelling, you've got refs calling out penalties, you've got music, you've got an announcer giving a play-by-play, -play, and on top of that, they usually are playing music in the background, <laughs> so it's like a real three-ring circus out there. And you have to hear all this stuff. You have to hear what's going on. Because if you get a penalty and you don't acknowledge it right away, you get another penalty and you sit in the penalty box for a minute and you get enough of those and you're out of the game. You know, you get seven penalties, you foul out. Uh, and we had one player, I know she got, I'm, yeah, I think I know she got at least two misconduct penalties because when she'd get called on a penalty, she'd kind of look at the ref and go, what do you mean? You know, something like that. And refs don't like that. Uh, refs will tell you, look at us to acknowledge you heard the penalty and then get off the track. And the one time I got a penalty uh, Wednesday night, I knew what I did. I forearmed um, a jammer down. I knew it. And I heard the whistle go off and Cassidy, forearm. <laughs> And I looked at the ref and I nodded like that and I, I put my hands up and I went off the track. I went to the penalty box. That's all I did. I did exactly what she said to do. Just look at us, acknowledge that you heard the penalty, and then get off the track. And that's what I did. I was just like, okay. <laughs> yeah, you don't sit there and go, what do you mean you called a penalty on me? <laughs> No, that's not good. Yeah, I heard I heard that at least one time. I think I know she got called on a misconduct penalty earlier, and then I heard her get called, I think it was on a cut track, and then I heard her say something like, What do you mean? <laughs> like that. It was like tweet misconduct. <laughs> and that's another 30 seconds. So she had to sit in the penalty box for a minute. And in actuality, we had so many people coming in and out of the penalty box. Um you usually were in there for more than a minute <laughs> because we had so many people in the penalty box the the scorekeeper Ida uh, she, she, she was kind of unable at some point she was like okay who's next who's going back next it was just too many people can we get it out so uh, and this is all good news because Tuesday night I was ready to quit I mean that's how bad it was uh, me and two of my teammates went out for a drink and some pizza afterwards and I was like, I quit. That's it. I give up. I can't do this shit. And they spent like 30, 40 minutes talking me down until I got to the point where I was like, okay, okay, yeah, I get it. Yeah. So, uh, one of the things I also did yesterday was I went back and looked at some video that I posted on my blog of when we were doing tripod drills back in like August. Yeah, like back in August, the six months ago. And I'm looking at it going, oh my God, <laughs> we're hardly, we're hardly hitting. <laughs> it's like, boop, bump it. You know, we were hardly hitting and stuff like that. And the other night we were just slamming into one another, you know? <laughs> 
And back then it was like we were hardly hitting. We had absolutely no idea what we were doing. So yeah, just in six months time, which really for me was about two months of practice, um, we've improved greatly. And that's what they were saying. You know, my teammates were saying, look, you're this close to finishing this. You're doing good. You know how to do this stuff. Don't give up. You know, stop it. You know, stop beating yourself up every time you have a bad night. And it made me look up a quote that I had seen before. I forgot who the player is that actually said this. And the quote goes something like, um, we, a lot of people come to Derby during transitional periods in their lives. And we destroy our bodies to save our souls. And in a way that makes sense. And when I joined back in May, you know, I knew things were not going well for me at work. I had that feeling. I knew things weren't going well for me back home. I had that feeling. Um, and as it turned out, I was proven right. I was laid off at the end of last year. And then after I went home for my daughter's birthday and graduation, I get back here and I, my wife tells me she filed for divorce, <laughs> which I kind of suspected she was going to do all along. <clears throat> and my depression had not you know, had not alleviated it was still pretty bad so this whole this whole thing of I am in kind of a transitional period right now I was I still am and I've really been busting my ass to get ahead in this and all of you who've been following this know this because I talk about it a lot now so I don't know yeah, see? <laughs> Derby kisses. You know, that's part of the game right there is getting hit and being and hitting. And that's just minor. I haven't even gotten anything. Like when I hit my head the other night, uh, that's the first time I've hit my head and then went, you know, <laughs> I'm dizzy. Uh, did I get like a slight concussion? Yeah, probably. You know, it was just enough I hit my head. Even my coach Roxy said, no, I heard her hit her head. And she was standing in the infield. And I was on the outside, so I was probably like, you know, 30 feet away from her. And she says, no, I heard, I heard her hit her head. You know, I was just like, boink. <laughs> and I wear a hockey helmet. And that's the second time I've taken a hit right back here at the back of my head. <laughs> So, it's a good thing I have that hockey helmet, because I think if I didn't have a hockey helmet, I'd be taking a lot more, a lot more of a hit. And it probably would have hurt more. That's why I got a hockey helmet, because several of the women on the New York team wear hockey helmets just for that reason, because they have had bad concussions. And, uh, like Devour, the coach at York, said, she was, she's been actually kicked in the head a couple of times and she said with a hockey helmet she's never had a problem so it's like they've been doing this for a long time i'm listening to them <laughs> when they say get a hockey helmet i get a hockey helmet and that's twice now where i've taken a bad fall like that and i think and i've hit the back of my head like right here and i think that's a case of where the helmet actually saved me from being hurt uh, a lot more severe than I could have been hurt. So, so that's it. That's all my good news. Um, Got to bust my butt. I'm actually going to the open skate today, and then tomorrow I'll go to Baltimore. President's Day Monday practice. I've got practice on Tuesday. I've got practice on Wednesday. Jeez, <laughs> it's just getting insane. There you go. And I will get back to writing. Um, I'm gonna get into writing. I'm going to do a little writing tonight. Uh, I'm going to do a little writing tomorrow. I'll have plenty of time. I need to do laundry tomorrow is what I really need to do. But. <sighs> laundry. Yeah. So uh, that's going to be it. I'm coming up on 40 minutes of nonstop ramble on. I sound like a Led Zeppelin song. Ramble on. 
But it's good talking to you, and I, I hope you have a good rest of the weekend. I hope you have a good President's Day, and go see Black Panther, okay? Bye.